Hey, Steph. Um, you probably play with more joy than anybody in the league. Um, and if anybody's a close second, it's probably Jaw. What do you see in him in that sense? And like, what does it take to play with joy? Um, I mean, to each their own, what, what you get out of the game, what the game does for you. Um, the excitement you create just going into a game, not knowing what's going to happen, but with the right intentions and just in, enjoying yourself, like the amount of work that goes into it, the uh, day after day sacrifice that it takes to be great uh, when it comes out on the floor. You know, there's a lot of ways to express it, but it's um, it's the most fun out there. So, I mean, I, don't, I can't speak for him in terms of what what that is, but you know, basketball is fun at its core. It's it's it's, uh, it's energetic, competitive. All the all the emotions kind of come out in different different times. So, I, I love it, and there's a consistency about that too. So. Highs, lows, practice games that matter. Just try to find something that excites you about uh, the opportunity that you have every day. Do you see some of yourself in him? We all express it differently. I mean, it's uh, it's definitely a um, you know excitement factor. Just watching him play, things he can do on the floor, you know, and uh, you know the mannerisms and stuff that he, that he expresses on the court. Like I, I love it all just because it's, it's, it shows again, how much the game means to you, how competitive you are and uh, the appreciation for those moments out there on the floor. Uh, Cause you know, all the work that goes into it. What'd you think of Rachel Hack wearing his Jersey though? When you, that was nice. Nice touch. <laughs> Apparently it, it wasn't planned. So uh, I had to, had to uh, enjoy that moment and take the picture with her. Steph, um, what what does the small lineup uh, need to do to sort of get back to being as effective as it was against Denver um, in game two against Memphis? That lineup was outscored, I think, by 11. Um, and, and the logical concerns about going small have been defense and rebounding. But Draymond was saying um, not just that lineup, but throughout the game, really the offense was what was sort of out of character a little bit. Um, I'm curious what you think. We will Stay take. striking that balance, uh, obviously, because Denver, we – we're kind of gunslinging all around the court. Everybody was was feeling it, and shots were going in all over the place. We were creating good offense, and when you create good offense, obviously you're scoring, but you're you know always keeping the defense set or your defense set, and giving yourself a best chance to to rebound and and overcome some of the uh, size differentials out there. The, you know these first two games. Shots haven't fallen as as much as we want them to, but a lot of that is because, um, you know, Memphis is an athletic, kind of aggressive team on defense, um, but there are ways to kind of exploit that, and we just haven't done that consistently enough throughout the course of the game where, you know, bad shots or bad shot selection, the floor is unbalanced, you can't get back in, in transition. Uh, obviously, live ball turnovers. I talked about it before the series and did a pretty good job in game one. We didn't in, in game two. Difference in a couple possessions um, where they're out in transition and they're they're obviously extremely fast and athletic and they can make you pay. Fourth quarter, I gave up. I gave up two threes because I had two straight turnovers. Um, and, and, you know, they come down and, and Zaire hits his two threes and that changes the whole momentum of the game. So, if we can just stay disciplined on offense about what shots we're trying to create, taking care of the ball, um, keeping things simple on that side, it helps everything. And we'll see how it plays out in terms of the uh, the numbers. Steph, I, I wasn't there for my draft, and I got Kennedy Carter with my number one pick from WNBA fantasy draft. You think that was a good selection? <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you uh, selected somebody is a big, big step, big fella. So definitely, uh, I mean, uh, I probably would have went with Sabrina. She wasn't available. What pick did you have? Uh, nine. Yeah. Okay. Big, big year from Kennedy Carter. Coming. <laughs>
<laughs> I, I, out of curiosity, uh, just say the game plan calls for more isolation. Uh, having not done it a lot during the year, is that something, is it easy to just flip the switch and say, all right, we need to go more ISO? And because you're in your 98th year, you just know how to do that? Um, yeah, that's always the case. I mean, I don't know how much of a priority that'll be in terms of the shots we're trying to create because looking at the film, um, I think we've been a little rushed because of their athleticism. We've been a little rushed thinking the first available shot is the best shot and you don't make them make them work or use their aggressiveness and uh, their speed against them. If it does slow down to a different pace and you need to go ISO and kind of pick and choose your spots, like you look around the league, there are obviously <clears throat> uh, teams that probably do it a little bit more than we do in the fourth quarter. Um, it could be a good way to kind of keep things under control and know who's trying to get the shot and what matchup you want and all that type of stuff. But, you know, to your point, that is just a feel thing of being aware, being assertive, um, taking control of whatever moment it is and saying, all right, we need to go at whoever and put the ball in whoever's hands that we want it. But I think right now it's more for us to focus on everything else and how we're creating shots throughout the course of the game to get us into a better rhythm because, you know, we need to obviously be much more efficient on, on that inner floor. Steph, thinking about just how different this roster has been constructed than the teams that went to the finals, when, when you've talked about all the strength training and work that you've done to get stronger, how much of that is a focus to this part of the year when you may be asked to do more defensively than you would have been asked during that five straight year run to the finals? Uh, that wasn't the motivation, but it's part of just being ready for whatever uh, you're asked to do. And like you said, you know how much more physical this, this time of year gets. If we do go small lineups, being able to guard a bunch of different guys, keep them out the paint, box out, and be able to rebound, even offensively, take physicality um, on that end of the floor and not let it affect you. So all that stuff goes into it. Um, but that's more just a progression of me throughout my career, not so much a reaction to anything. Steph, John handles the ball a lot. He controls a lot of their offense. And talking to Draymond a few minutes ago, he said the tone should not be trying to control Ja because he's going to get his. It should be controlling the other guys. Do you kind of feel the same way or do you feel like you could do a better job when Ja starts going off, especially like in, in the second half of games? It's a little bit of both. Like there's no one recipe you want to give because he is that talented, that quick, explosive. We obviously, he can finish at the rim all different type of ways. Um, I think we've part of the game plan. He's, you know, had shot, he shot 23 threes, I think, in the first two games, probably more than he's ever shot in his career in back to back games. So you kind of understand what we're trying to do. When it comes down to fourth quarter, you just want to make it difficult as much as possible. Um, but it's, it's crazy because you think about the way he's played the first two games at home. We had a four-point lead with three minutes left. Like, I don't want anybody overreacting to, like, he's a super, like, superstar talent. He's, like you said, going to get his, and he has the ball in his hands a lot. He's got a 30-plus, you know, field goal attempts every, you know, the first two games. So, there's going to be numbers, but it's how you get it. And then obviously in the fourth quarter, if you can make an adjustment or two to just make it a little bit more difficult, then that's the learning process going through a series. And we've been through this before and just got to execute on whatever that is. Um, but it, it hurt when you, when you lose a game like game two at the end and feel like you could have got another one, come home 2-0, like it changes the vibe a little bit, but you got to remember where we are in this series and, even with his numbers, we still had a you know a chance to win two straight games. So we just got to keep with the program and get better on offense, and hopefully you know take take control of the series. Steph, I believe this is the first time since the your first year in the playoffs that your 
in the postseason without Andre. What has that been like for you? Where do you where do you miss him the most? Just his composure, his IQ, the the plays that I think everybody in this room knows that he makes that either are highlighted or not. Just he's always in the right place at the right time, makes the right pass. Obviously defensively he gives us just leadership on that front, you know, obviously with Draymond and uh, just the presence. I think this year has been tough on him and the whole team being in and out of the lineup and, you know, trying to be available first and foremost, um, you know, with where he is in his career. Like it, it's, it's been, been a long year for him back and forth, rehab and all that. And and I think the, the, the hope is that come this time of year, he would be, you know, at his peak and he hasn't had the opportunity to do that. So it's uh it's tough, but he's given us a lot in the locker room and on the bench in terms of his presence and his, his voice and leadership on that front. So you would you rather have him on the court? But um you know, we'll see what happens uh moving forward. What about just for you and your game? Um, because he is such a playmaker and you guys have been together for so long. And obviously the relationship on and off the court is so strong. Um, how, how have you had to compensate not having him there at this time of the year? I don't know if I like compensate, but more so just you, it opens a playbook a little bit more, just if he can be in the secondary ball handler. Um, and you can trust that he's going to make the right play, whether it's the pass to me, Clay, JP, whoever it is. Um, that is a big, big loss on that front. Um, you can look at film of years past, like you said, where, you know, he's at the top of the floor. He's making, you know, that backdoor pass. Uh He's getting guys in the right flow and transition. He he always seems to just make the right play. So, you know, another trustworthy guy with the ball in his hands. But, um, you know, you, unfortunately, you can't spend too much time worrying about, you know, what could have been. And hopefully when he, if he is healthy and can get back out there, the good thing about him is doesn't need much transition time to make his presence felt just the way that he plays and approaches the game. So we are banking on that, you know, if he can get healthy in time. So if you had a really uh, going back an intriguing rookie environment with Jax, Monte, and I don't know how much mentoring you got that year, but when you, <laughs> you think about your rookie season and opposed to a guy like Kaminga, do you feel like even with everything you got going on, on and off the court, do you, do you try to go out of your way to spend time with him and get to know him? And how has he come along? Uh, I mean, there's, uh, that part is tough. Just I don't know how much like raw time we're spending together outside of, uh, you know, the locker room and, and road trips and stuff like that. But more so just the game that you can give him, just being around a, a good veteran, you know, locker room that has a lot of experience of you know, how to be a professional, how to, approach every single day with the right intentions, what he needs to learn as quick as possible to take that next step. Even being in this situation, you know, where you're in a playoff run, you know, fresh out the gate and you're getting a little bit of opportunity and um, getting that experience. Like all those things are going to be valuable for him if he takes um, the time to soak up as much information as possible. Me personally, like, always, you know, be able to tap him on the shoulder, let him know something that's on my mind or point something out throughout the course of the year and especially this time of year. So um, it'd be interesting to hear his perspective on, you know, what he got from this year at the end of it when it's all said and done. Because um, everybody's journey is a little different. Like you said, he's in a, I would call it a better situation in terms of, you know, being able to learn from the right type of people when it comes to like this type of time of year and winning basketball and, and what it takes to get here. Steph, um, thinking about Sunday being Mother's Day, um, do you still pay your mom for those turnovers? And and does she still get on you for that? You know, the check stopped cashing a couple of years ago, but uh, she still calls it out for sure. So I... Thankfully, she wasn't that game too, because I would have got a, <laughs> I would have got an earful after the game. But 
think I've evolved outside of having to worry about a penalty for uh, for turnovers, more so just the embarrassment of getting a text from mom. Like, you know, that's still on her radar. You talked earlier about the offense and maybe not being sort of in character, or maybe taking a quicker shot than they should. How does that equation change with the series at home now? Um, I mean, it's obvious you, you got the home support, you got noise, but how does that atmosphere affect things like the offense? Uh, interesting thought, just in terms of like on the road, you're always like kind of going for the, like the dagger shot, even if it's in the middle of the first quarter. Like it's seen, it feels different just because you're always feeling like uh, there's an opportunity to kind of put them down early. Um, even in the fourth quarter, like you do feel that uh, that anxiousness and that energy from the home crowd and just momentum swings back and forth. You always want to, you know, be the one that's doing something about it. Not saying you're playing hero ball, but you want to have you know, an opportunity to hit that big shot that, you know, clinches a game on the road. At home, it's a little bit different just because there's so much adrenaline and energy and every shot's like a, um, it dials up the atmosphere a little bit. So you got to kind of calm your, 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 uh, your body down, your mind down a little bit. So you're not moving a hundred miles an hour. Uh, and rushing for a different reason, just because you're so excited, um, and the home crowd's kind of behind you, so it takes another level of discipline for for both situations, but uh, for kind of different reasons. Two, two questions, Steph. When was the last time you banked in a three? That's a freaking great question. I don't know. That's why I didn't have a reaction because I was kind of confused myself. That's the way I didn't feel like it was a bank. When I went in, I was like, oh, I was. Oh, you didn't try to bank it. From the top of the key, I was about to say, you're trying to give me all that credit. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. You. Appreciate that. Is, is it fair to say you're, you're um, like the mid range is something you're going to uh, more now or like a safety blanket shot for you? I mean, yes and no. Like, just trying to take what's there. I think we've gotten in trouble. A couple of times, said I'm in my 98th year, I'm still trying to like float it above the rim and getting that joint beat up. <laughs> Especially with a, a very athletic team that their 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 key is to help in the paint. And when you feel like you get in there, um, those lanes kind of close pretty quick. So you got to pick and choose. You still got to be aggressive to the rim, you know, all your finishes and all that type of stuff. Aggressive to pass. To your point, like. If you can get down the, past the first layer of the defense before the help side can come in, that mid-range can be open. Um, but obviously still trying to get loose behind the three-point line is always a point of emphasis because that loosens up. Even if I'm not getting a shot, that loosens up a lot of different options to you know create advantages on the four and three on the backside and stuff like that. So it's, it's still the three-layer type of approach, but... Um, you do have to make subtle adjustments based on the strengths of the defense and what they're going to give you because they're playing aggressive, they're extreme help side and all that. you got to just get to space as much as possible. Steph, how does it affect this game knowing Brooks is not playing? I mean, obviously he didn't play most of the last game, but knowing he's not going to be in there and as many people have pointed out, he's been a primary defender on you. Um, knowing he's not going to be in this, how does – does that change the approach? How does how do you think it'll change the way the game unfolds? I guess doesn't change it at all. Um, their defensive principles are the same. It's funny because Dylan wasn't out there, and Zaire comes in and hits three big threes in the second half um, against us. Melton's getting more minutes, so they have other wing defenders that can get out there and, and try to take on that challenge. Um, whether he's in there or not, my approach stays the same. Hey, Last question. Go ahead, Melissa. I asked Dre this, and I'm curious to get your take as well. Obviously, nobody ever wants to miss the playoffs, but after five straight NBA Finals appearances and, like, how incredibly tough that is both mentally and physically, do you guys think that you needed that break in order to, like, be at the level you guys are at right now? Like, could you have kept that up? I always got to deal with reality as it comes. So it's hard to answer that question knowing we did everything in our power last year to try to get a playoff spot. You know, in that last 20 games, try to make a run. Year before, it was more injury 
uh, hamper, so I couldn't really do anything about that. But do I feel like we could have stayed at that level? Absolutely, just because that's how we're built. Did the two years off re-motivate us? Absolutely, because that's, you know, what the situation was. And, um, yeah, we'll say, you know, where we are as a team, where, you know, our core is in terms of, you know, our careers, like we feel like we have a whole lot more left in the tank. I mean, right now is an amazing opportunity for us because each time you get here, you realize, uh, one, how hard it is to get here, how hard it is to win, and the fact that there's a finite timeline to all of this um, in terms of trying to play at this level. So, got to appreciate it and enjoy it, and that's why, you know, uh, we love what we